the green global real estate education network where we open doors for people uh, one of our guys today called me up he was a straight mortgage guy closing like 50 mortgages as he says and now he sees that because if they weren't couldn't get the mortgage because of credit or whatever he was just passing them by now i told him i said well geez we have credit guys put them over to the credit guy this way when they're ready they'll you back or we'll find investors for you to buy their second note or their or their as a 30 to 50 percent um mortgage on it so we can you know so some of our investors who want passive income at seven and a half to nine percent can buy these houses the owners they're not renters the owners can stay in there so you make a nice you know nice return on your investment without the scariness of the gambleness that a lot of us are are, are you know we shake our you know we shake if we don't be buying crazy prices properties credit uh, um, income anyway we just flew up a photographer from texas and uh, uh, our director of membership and she created a little commercial for us more of a what is green four minute video we're trying to cut it down to three minutes that you can show somebody who we are because people ask me who am I? I talk for an hour and a half and they still say, I like it, I just don't know anything about it. So we try to narrow it down to a very specific thing. So Marcus, can you put that on for us? Roll the tape. Roll the tape. of education, nobody ever gave me the tools or resources I needed to develop financial freedom. Selling skills, financial literacy, the mindset of success, nobody taught me to think like an entrepreneur. And that's why we have GREEN. Education and networking are part of everyone's blueprint to achieving financial freedom. So what is GREEN? Global Real Estate Education Network. Uh, I think our folder sums it up right here, Mentor with Millionaires. Green is an education company that gives its members the ability to have live, interactive online training with successful millionaires and industry experts. When you join Green, you are not a sales rep. We call our members mentors for a reason, because we believe that ultimately by giving back to others, all of us benefit. Our goal is simple, to create and empower a culture of learning and passion for real estate and personal development. We want to make each of you millionaire mentors to others here at green we give you the blueprint my name is paul kazanowski and i'm a mentor with green and i started in the real estate business many many years ago like we're talking a decade ago and i started when the the market was really dead and i had a great mentor in my uncle who owns 400 properties in the southern california area education is the number one thing that helps grow your business. It doesn't matter if you're a really high level investor, real estate entrepreneur, or you're just beginning. With Green, there's something for everyone. You can literally network with people outside of your state. There's people in Florida all the way down to, you know, California and all the way up to New York, if you will. Most of the time when a student asks a question, there's probably 1,500 students around the country that want to know the answer for that question. The people in green, in the green organization, are plugged in to the heartbeat of what the real estate market is doing. All you have to do is watch, then you connect with people, and then you earn money. It's that simple. It's like a one, two, three process. Watch, connect, and then earn. Prospecting is the key to success. We teach you how to approach people, how to build relationships, and how not to be afraid. Everybody can still keep growing. It doesn't matter who you sit down with. If it's somebody on a higher level 
and you wanted to ask them a question, they'll answer it. We all learn from each other at Green. I learned from Michelle Moore and her book that she put out. She's an award-winning author. She wrote a book called Selling Simplified, and I learned so many tips from her from that book. Fast tip number 17 says, you got to commit to good education. And I love to tell people, you can't outgrow learning. Some of the things I like about Green is the people that are in it. I love that you get to network. Of course, it's all about real estate education. But one of the other things that I love about it is just the caliber of people that I've been able to meet and learn from. I was excited because I know in the real estate industry, there are so many people that could do such greatness if they just had the means, the education, and the know-how. Here at Green, we have a simple step-by-step -step sales process with tons of tools and resources to help you build not only your green business, but your own business as well. Having the structure and the accountability to take guidance from somebody that's been there and has the answers for you cuts out a enormous amount of time. Just think, most programs ask for tens of thousands of dollars to learn. With Green, for really minimal fee, we teach you the same stuff and we network together and help you get to the success a lot quicker. And if that's not exciting, check this out. Everybody needs a new revenue stream. With Green, we give you the platform that if you share the platform with other people, you'll get a check too. while to get to the Millionaire Club through hard blood, sweat, and tears. I'm Paul Kazanowski, and I invite all you guys to mentor with millionaires. Hey guys, this is Steve Chasen, and I'm a green mentor. I'm Jeremy Tabor, and I'm a green mentor. I'm Manny Shiofu, and I'm a green mentor. My name is Marcus Guillory, and I am a mentor with green. My name is Irina Dubinskaya, and I'm a green mentor. I'm Eva Nightingale, and I'm a green mentor. Don't look at what something costs you, look at what it makes you. I'm Lynn Day, and I'm a green mentor. Hey, I'm Mark LaPera, and I'm a green mentor. We're not working. <laughs> The connecting part. See, a lot of people forget that. They, they come to the meeting, and then they leave, and they come back next week, and then they wonder why uh, a couple people you know, who, who leave, they wonder why they're not, oh, uh, hey, uh, I'm not successful. You didn't connect. You don't know. He sees it over here. Gee, he said, uh, Les and, and Lloyd and these guys are connecting. Well, they're, they're, where, where are you? Where are you? Where's Lloyd? There he is. Yeah. He blends. Oh, there he is. <laughs> he blends. Uh, the deals happen in here because we work as a team. We don't work as a, some of those. You go to the reading groups. God love them, but they're old. And there's 200 people in there. So if somebody has a deal. Well, up here, they were actually elbowing people out of the way to get to the darn deal. <laughs> we just say, hey, listen, you want to go to the other? Hey, listen, how about you? you know, we got to, what, what's the difference? We buy, I don't, I, I don't know how many houses we have, but I can't count them on all the digits that I have in my body. We have that many properties right now. Nobody has that kind of properties as, as we do in this room. Um, I bet, I bet between us we have some 20 or 30 properties right now built to sell. Who, who has that here in Nashville? So anyway, uh, Steve doesn't like me talking about, but he's not here, so. Uh, anyway, what we do here at Green on Wednesday night is we bring in some just cool talent. Uh, I'm constantly... Uh, travel in the country or listening to everyone around the country 
industry, finding the, the, the best speakers around that have catch my ear with new and interesting messages. Uh, I spent a lot of time in Florida, that's why I have a lot of Florida friends. But now I know Trish just moved out of Tampa and now she's in Colorado or somewhere. But before she gets on, I'll, I'll give you all the time you need, Trish. Let me go, go around the room once. Uh, we have uh, some new people, but just really quick, we can hit everybody if they're quick enough. Go ahead. That's enough. Okay. That, oh. <laughs> that goes up for me. Yeah. <laughs> He, he just gets checks. He don't care if anybody knows his name. He just holds up eleven thousand dollar checks every couple of weeks. His name is Payne. <laughs> My name is Anthony Branch. Uh, I'm a Green Mentor. He's a Green Mentor. You can hang around with these guys. You know they'll take you out shopping. I'm Jerry Bone. I'm new to this class. Excited to learn. Cool. Uh, my name is Lloyd Carr. I'm a wholesaler. You can call me a guru too. <laughs> you write me a check? Yes, I'm gonna write somebody in this room a check. Right now. Cool deal. A N D I G. <laughs> 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 I'm real fast, yeah. I'm John Martin. I do commercial and residential, and been doing it for decades. So um, interesting. John was here. Just a few of us were here last week in Valentine's Day. It doesn't hold us up. Uh, John's a builder, and since it was a small crowd, I said, "Well, geez, let's let's do a deal. Let's do something creative." And he has a building system. Prefab magnesium walls, brick or stone or siding, uh, high, high insulation. They slap up in, in three days. You can have the the whole house up. So between that, we have these green block, which are prefab or or, or like Legos that you fill concrete in. Or we were going to do modulars because we buy so many empty pieces of ground. I hate to just sell the ground out because we sell in a day. I'd rather put a sign on the door of the yard and with a picture of a house and sell it with a house. I mean, it would increase the profit. Always find a way to do one more step to increase your profit. Um, there's, there's always something that we're not thinking of, and that's what I just keep trying to bring in new people. So. Uh, anybody want to get involved in the deal with uh, John and I and, and a couple of people here? Uh, see us after. I brought some more information on this. Got yeah, more information on it. Uh, my name is Zachary, and uh, as I say, uh, I guess I'm an expiring green mentor. There you go. Expiring or inspiring? Inspiring. I'm first firing. Turn the air up. It's all right. Yeah. I'm Kevin. Grodi. I'm a retired CPA and I do mortgage, so I'll do the traditional and reverse. And I'm uh, a bird dog for you know short sale. And she does reverse mortgages, and she was going to give us a give a class for us on reverse mortgages uh, because I heard her one time speak, and I said you have to tell people about that here. She did, but we're going to record that, and uh, we're going to have her do a full full blown reverse mortgage class for us because if you don't know about reverse mortgages and you're an agent and you're not using that niche to get your people then you're just missing out on thousands and thousands of dollars back in the back i'm marina i'm green member world traveler green member and the crew <laughs> um, i'm Crystal, and we do uh fix and flip rental <laughs> They're out in Center Hill. Also, if you have some property out there, they can maybe take a look at it for you and you know, keep an eye on it for you. If you give you some idea of, uh, of the value out there. We're going to start a green meeting out there one of these days. And they'll be broadcasting like we are. So Tuesday night, there's going to be a You can watch the real estate investor be in Tennessee. It's a call that way. <laughs> yeah, I just, uh, I kind of don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we didn't talk to you. Yeah, yeah. That's why he's so excited. I was guilty.
resolution this year is like all the clubs I get to for free, I'm actually gonna start. <laughs> 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 Alright, so that's 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 that's
And uh, she was saying that in the last month, correct me on this, Trist, in the last month, she's actually lived in seven different places as she's getting herself situated. So God bless her. The very fact that she was able to, uh, you know, to be able to make it and teach for us tonight is already an accomplishment. Um, but i um, very excited to have her teach for us. Uh, she actually has a standing course on title uh, title 101 basically uh, on the website uh, so if you're a green member you can go ahead and check that out uh, she is a very fine teacher and I think we're going to be in for a good uh, presentation tonight as well so Mark do you want to Mark go on. could you make her full size uh, bigger and you guys no offense but the shrink <laughs> yes we will <laughs> yes we will all right see you Daryl all right, Trish, the floor is yours. Trish Murphy. Thanks, everybody. I'm really excited to be here really tonight. To be and, um, and I see that we have a wide range of people with a wide range of skills in the room. It sounds like we do have some newbies, and I can't see the room anymore. Um, but uh, is anybody relatively new, not just to green, but maybe into the real estate industry or newer in the real estate industry? And I say three years or less in the real estate industry. If you are, like, raise your hand. Quite a few. Okay, perfect. Okay, perfect. So so I don't know how many of you have actually attended a closing or been to a closing, but... Um, maybe even just your own maybe there were some surprises that happened at the closing table and as we all know surprises at the closing table are not a good thing so tonight we're going to kind of go through the closing process we're going to talk about the um closing disclosure and the settlement statement and the differences between the two of those and then we're going to talk about some crazy things that have happened at the closing table and some things that you can avoid so stay tuned so i'm going to tell you a little bit about me um everybody got to tell uh me a little bit about you i have been in the title insurance and real estate industry for over 17 years i graduated from miami university in oxford ohio so i'm originally from ohio in 2001 i graduated from from Trine University in Indiana with my master's in 2014. I currently hold my Indiana and Florida real estate license and my license um, for real estate instructor in Indiana and Florida. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of confidence in what I'm about to tell you tonight. So real estate closings, everybody thinks that real estate is super easy, but I say it's super complicated. So some of the questions that I've encountered with being in the title insurance side of things over the course of the years is who's governing the transaction? What happens after you write the purchase agreement? Why, the why is the title company asking so many questions? I got that one a lot. When can we get the keys and where did everybody go? And I put a picture of the chicken and the egg because what comes first? The purchase agreement, the title insurance, the order, the closing, how does it all happen? So we're going to talk about who governs the transaction. And for my mortgage friends in here, you guys know all about the next few slides that I'm going to talk about. So it's RESPA, which is the Real Estate Settlement Procedures Act. It was actually passed in 1974, and it was to protect consumers and to also eliminate kickbacks. I know that nobody has ever had any kickbacks or referral fees um, out there there but it was to help govern some of that and we didn't see any of that through the uh, mortgage crisis at all so so what exactly does RESPA govern so it actually governs mortgage loans that are attached to a one to four family residential property again it's to eliminate kickback practices okay and the type of loans that it includes would consist of purchase loans assumptions refinances property improvement loans and equity lines of credit so that doesn't include everything that happens in real estate by any stretch of the imagination so this is my funny slide for this evening so respatilla or the godzilla of respa happened in 2015 after the mortgage crisis the real estate industry was a little crazy and anybody that has been in it longer than three years five years seven years knows how crazy it was um 
And so we saw a lot of changes. The problem is, is that they didn't talk to any of us in the industry. They didn't ask any of us for questions, um, our input into all of the changes. Um, and they just went ahead and made the changes. They gave us the date of October 3rd and told us that everything had to be worked Working. However, there weren't a lot of clear cut, uh, concise rules. And so there was still a lot of things that were up for interpretation in the rules. So the closing disclosure for, for my mortgage friends, you see this every, on a daily basis. Um, and Andrea, if you want to go ahead and put that up now. I went ahead and put this website into um, the presentation. It is through the CFPB, um, which is the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau. And this is a really great website. If you've got questions over the closing disclosure, um, it, it shows you step by step what each line is really and what you should be looking for on a closing disclosure if you or one of your customers are getting a mortgage loan. So if you use this website, you can ut utilize it to ask questions of your title professional that you're working with um, or even just kind of learn it more or better yourself. And it does have the little pluses over on the side. It'll give you a little more information and it does go through all five pages because there are some confusing boxes inside of of this closing disclosure um, because they did combine the HUD one and the truth in lending. And so the truth in lending um, was talking about APR and that can always get confusing, especially at the closing table. And I believe it's on page four, uh, maybe not. Um, Anyway, there's some confusing boxes in here. There it is, page five, my apologies. Um, the total interest percentage. So that is a big scary number. And it says on this one, it says 69%. So um, that gets a lot of questions. So it just gives you the ability to go ahead and um, talk to your customers or look at for yourself to be able to understand if you're getting a mortgage or not getting a mortgage or one of your customers is getting a mortgage. One of your buyers wants to do a mortgage. It helps you understand what they're getting. Um, um, with the closing disclosure. All right. So what happens if there's no mortgage? Who governs the cash transaction, commercial transactions, and do the settlement statements look different or does your title company use the same closing disclosure? Um, the answer to that is the contract. So the contract, while well, it governs all transactions. There's no RESPA for, for commercial, cash, or agricultural transactions. So what happens if there's a problem with those transactions? Your title company is going to refer back to what states what it states in the contract. And if the contract isn't written clear, the title company may ask for some kind of an addendum. Um, what's really happening in that contract. Um, so you want to make sure that when you're doing those cash transactions, commercial, cash, agricultural, that you have a lot of detail in your purchase agreement. So this is, this is an example of a closing statement. This is what you typically will see with a cash transaction. And this is simple in my opinion. This shows you debits and credits and a buyer side and a seller side. It's one page. It's not five pages like the closing disclosure. There's a lot less that goes into it because there's no mortgage involved and the government's not involved. As we know, when the government gets involved, we have to make it really confusing. So on to the next thing, why do we have to make the, or why is the title company asking so many questions? As I stated before, I got that question all the time. So why do we keep asking questions? For, the, for one thing, we're clearing title. So who actually owns the property? Is it the individual that signed the contract or is it a corporation or an LLC? Who has the right to sell? If um, it's a corporation, there may only be one person that has the authority to sign. Um, I know that I have seen daughters sign purchase agreements for parents where they had no authority to sign a purchase agreement. And what if the mother didn't want to sell the property? That then becomes a problem. The next point is, are they alive? Um, and I know this sounds like a crazy thing to say, but um, people don't realize that power of attorneys cease to uh, 
be valid once someone passes away because dead people can't sign documents. So we need to know, um, are they alive and will they be attending closing? Because to go along with that, if there's a power of attorney, does the power of attorney cover real estate matters? It may not. Um, so your title company is gonna ask to see a power of attorney to review it and have their attorneys review it. Um, is it the right property? And I know, again, that sounds like, well, duh, I wrote the, the legal description in the contract. However, we literally had a closing that was a new construction and the lot numbers got changed. Somebody bumped one of the signs over and the lots got changed. And so what we closed on was not the lot that the people thought they were purchasing. So everything had to be undone and redone at that point. So part of the clearing title is, are there any mortgages, debts, or other judgments that have to be paid? Again, those are going to go to um, whether or not you're in a homestead state, whether it's a, your homestead property, um, whether you're in a dowry state, um, and it's your dowry property. Um, oops, sorry. There we go. Um, and... All of those things can really affect whether judgments and other debts have to be paid. Mortgages typically will always have to be paid off unless somebody is willing to assume that mortgage um, on that property. And then there's taxes. Um, as I'm sure you're all aware, there's current taxes, delinquent taxes, and tax sales, which again, depending on what state you're in and depending on your state laws, I'm not going to go into that tonight, but they're all very different dependent upon your state. And so you really need to make good friends with the title company. But this is why they're asking you a lot of questions. So we're going to dig in a little farther and we're going to talk about IDs, divorces, LLCs, and death. So I don't know how well you can see this ID right here, but this is Thor in case anyone uh, wanted to know who that was. And it looks like his ID was issued in 2016 and it doesn't expire until 2021. So that would be an acceptable identification for him to bring to closing. Um, if someone's ID is expired, most underwriters, which is the title company underwriter, will not allow you to close with an expired ID of any sort. So that means a passport, um, driver's license, anything like that. But um, state laws may state that you can close with an expired driver's license. Um, I found out that in Florida, it was up to me as a mobile notary, but it was also up to my underwriter whether we would accept an expired ID, um, but it was legal to do it there. So uh, divorces, I had several people tell me stories about divorces. I asked for several of my realtors to share stories with me and um, divorces are a unique situation, um, especially when there's property involved because often it's their largest asset or it's their largest debt that they have. And so it becomes a very uh, trying time for them when they're going through the divorce. And um, people tend to get really nasty at the closing table. So again, be friends with your title company. Give them a heads up that this is a divorce. They can typically schedule uh, separate closing times, separate closing rooms, um, going to somebody's work or home uh, to avoid having a nasty situation. I had a realtor tell me about a couple that was going through a divorce and they were throwing papers at each other at the closing table because they kept them in the same room. So people also try and do crazy things with houses, i.e. mortgage them or sell them without the other person's knowledge during a divorce. So you always kind of want to ask those questions when you're dealing with your customers or when you're looking to purchase a property. So with LLCs, this kind of goes along with corporations. Um, and I'll use myself as an example. I have an LLC with my parents. And we all have to sign a document in order for us to do any kind of encumbering on any of the properties that we own. Um, depending upon how your documentation is written, your title company is going to ask for that. Don't get mad at them for that. It's really important because what if you have a partner and it states that both of you have to uh, sign off on the paperwork? 
everything in order to be legal uh, has to be signed off together. It's just like banking accounts or anything like that. Um, and so it's really important that the title company, when they're asking for your, your documentation to go ahead and provide everything to them. I know um, we got a lot of piecemeal um, things and we have to see it all because we want to make sure that we're doing the right thing and that the right person is signing the documentation either at the closing um, or prior to the closing, such as the purchase agreement. Um, and the last one I put on there was the death. Uh, dead people can't sign documents no matter what. And again, the power of attorney ceases to exist when someone passes away. So always remember that they can't come if they can't come to closing they better have they better be alive and they better have a document that says that somebody else can sign for them um we've had it way too often where uh for example i went to sign a refinance the other night and i got there and we sat there and we were chatting and i was waiting for his wife and i finally said oh is she running late he said no she's been dead for six years unfortunately she can't mortgage a property so um she couldn't sign the document so it created a it created a bad feeling for him because we then had to talk about that. I had to call his lender in front of him and have that discussion. They didn't catch it on the documents. Um, she was in title. He hadn't taken her off of title. So uh, it just became a really um, bad situation. We had to reschedule the closing because the documents couldn't be redone right then. Um, and so it was just kind of uh, opening wounds again that didn't need to be opened. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm going to show you the closing process and this is, I like it, I found it online. It's not exactly perfect, but it's pretty close. Um, as you can see, there's the closing process that includes the mortgage company and the title company. And then you can also eliminate the, the mortgage company is on the left hand side in the black title company is on the right. Um, in in the red and really it says after receiving instructions down at the bottom it's sorry down at the bottom in the big red box it says after receiving instructions from the lender then the survey will be ordered the warranty deed etc etc those things are ordered long before we get instructions um, so that really needs to kind of go up a little farther but just kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of what the closing process looks like and I do love the little highlighted box it says contract and then it says everyone wants to to close or go around the right. Um, when they get that commitment, people don't understand um, that we still have to clear the title. So we want to make sure there's no closing surprises. We're trying at every uh, every turn, every corner to try and keep keep everything in line and for everybody to have a great experience at the closing table. So that is my presentation. It was short, sweet, and to the point, and I'm ready for questions. And I can't hear anybody. Sorry. All right, questions. Sorry. Trish, you, uh, I guess you just moved in. Uh, pardon the, uh, pardon the choppiness. Uh, she's probably not on, uh, on direct, uh, direct I am. connection. I am. Are you? Well, yeah. Well, we're going to have to yeah. figure something out if you're going to be working there in your, your for, uh, for your classes because uh, that that was one of our uh, situations because we're so far ahead of the curve here with, with our technology is we need a good upload speed. A lot of times we had problems here last month about upload speed. Any questions for her? The monthly mortgage people pretty much know what's going on. Kathy, do you have a question? Um, what, do, uh, what do they look for when someone has their property in a trust where it just powers to be able to uh, borrow money in the trust is that what they're looking for? I can answer that. The trust has to be written so the people who are making the decisions are to take more time with life to make this decision of life So they look at how I would ask I need a oh, I'm title. sorry he said the lender I'm sorry. Yeah I'm a lender too. Oh, okay. I, okay. Yeah sorry. I just wanted oh, no, I know anybody can ask questions Yeah I wanted her I I tell a, a title slant on that. Okay, yeah. I can help you that. I've been using them since you need You hear that, Trish? You don't have problems in the trust right now. You know, who who can there. sign a, Who can sign for a trust? Well, my question is the trustee. That. What? My question. My question is, what is her company looking at when we give them a trust? 
So what is your company looking at when you get a trust? So most of the time, um, we're looking at who the people are. Do the people, like who's trying to do what with the trust? Um, if, if they're trying to, are they trying to mortgage? Is that what you're, did I understand that you're a mortgage person? Sorry. So you're just looking that they have the power to do that, right? Yes. And all your yes. Leads? They're looking to mortgage. So you're just looking to see if yes. they actually have the legal power to do that? Correct. And who, like, is it, again, Correct. free? And who, or like, is it, again, free? Um, death. So are they alive? Do they have to be alive for somebody to do it? Is it, are these the successor trustees? Are these the actual trustees of the trust? And what the powers are and who has to actually sign the documentation? dollars to approve the trust. They weren't the attorney that did the trust. They just charged $150 to approve the trust. You do that, charge a fee just to approve a trust comes across your desk you say oh there's a hundred fifty dollar bill and send it out the just title company the charges they charge yeah. a lot of my clients that to wow and, and another wow. writer will say i have to have an approval from the title company that this you know because basically the title company's taking on the risk of letting it close in the trust Absolutely. So, I Absolutely. know the title company Absolutely. realizes that, so they're charging them. Interesting. Interesting. That that must be that must be a thing there. I've not seen that, um, but that doesn't mean each state is different on their laws and their rules and what all you can charge on the on the closing disclosure. I've had some a title company not want to close with the trust. I just went to the next one. Yeah, I had. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I, 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 had, <laughs> not my I, I was refused. <laughs> you have to know which title companies go over which yeah, properties. Yeah. I, I have some properties that only go to one title company when I do my uh, lease purchase deals. I, I received, you know, she knows I like to do the 50 shades of real estate, you know, so <laughs> you have to have like, several different go to people for your closing agents. Well, Tris, Tris can probably, I mean, there's, we can get into a thousand things that we can talk about in some of our online classes for you guys that are members. This is, it can go really in depth. Yeah. Um, one thing that we're encountering, at least on the investment side, and Trish, I don't know if you hear me. Um, obviously, we have issues. Uh, we bought some properties at sheriff sales, and uh, most of the national title insurance carriers are, are putting a 20-year prohibition on insuring those. We have one one in town that I know of that will do uh, insurance without having to go through a quiet title lawsuit. Um, that's just. For, I don't know how it is in Colorado, Florida, wherever, but I, I do know here in Davidson County that. Um, you hear that, Trish? Yes. Yes. Any comment? Uh, it's from a risk uh, perspective. A risk. So, I, I, I mean, the title companies, they've gotten hurt in a lot of ways with the sheriff sale properties because things weren't foreclosed on properly, and so. They're going forward during a certain amount of time. Like putting it up. It's the same thing as just do a quiet title under a couple of thousand bucks and you're done with this. For, this is a, a bit more esoteric and relative to Tennessee. Um, but the actual notice, and there's a reason for this, the notice, and most attorneys don't know this, we had a pretty good one recently. If a foreclosure sale is conducted, we've been through this on the front of you. Foreclosure sale is conducted to satisfy a judgment lien or a sheriff sale. There has to be specific uh, notice or a specific wording in the order from the court and um, and the public notice that it's uh, uh, on a credit of. No less than the essence of that being um, the redemption period. That's right, or, or or it is redeemable. In other words, the right of redemption is not is not barred. You have a statutory right of redemption in Tennessee. 
but something to be very careful with. Some people might go to an auction and buy this property, but it can actually be redeemed by anybody that uh, you know pays the money on behalf of the, the former debtor, um, unless it has that specific language. And if it has a specific language, it's not. It, 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 if it is done properly, and that's kind of what Trish just said, that she nailed it, is the reason they won't insert these things because, is because of risk, mm -hmm. because they've had issues with them. And inappropriate. It is a poorly worded statute, it's very vague, and that's, that's what it says in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Property must be sold on credit of no more than sons, no longer than years. Essentially, that meaning that uh, um, the person who is selling the property needs to have the capacity to extend the terms on their own terms to make it sellable. Um, but then that, unless the order from the court, it, it's just, it's a good, something good to register in your head if you're in the uh, distressed property business. Mm -hmm. It can bite you in a bad way. That's why I buy tax deed sales down in Florida and if I don't, Flip them fast to somebody else. I will get it away. Yes, sir. Uh, I guess my question about the title process is it different? This is the process for uh, closing on a property for a commercial property, for instance, like a strip mall or something, uh, apartment building or something like that, or even a collection of properties in a package. Would the process for closing be different if it was versus a single family property? Fish? I was going to say a commercial. I was going to say. I was going to say. Sorry, I've got a. I've got a delay with you. I don't know why. Um, commercial property, and there's a commercial guy that, or a guy in the room that said he was a commercial guy. He can attest to it. Commercial property is always more complicated and typically takes longer. Um, just it's more in depth than residential most of the time. I don't know if he would agree with me on that, but. I can attest to that. <laughs> all right, well, all right, well, thank you, Trish. I keep my expired Florida license because uh, they accept anything down in Florida. <laughs> and I, keep my, uh, I, I still vote Democratic because I can go dig up dead people and use their signatures uh, you know, for signing contracts. So, uh, any, uh, any other questions here? Last I got a bunch for the mortgage people because I didn't want to ask her because she got in and out so much. But as an investor, when we sell property, Learn. how can we make sure that process is going along and they don't wait until three days close? Oh, it's discovered it. Oh, that's a manufacturing home. We can't do that. Oh, All right.
and they're all different. All right, all right. Well, let's stop bashing on the poor mortgage people. One percent of the deal, whatever. Cry, cry, cry. And the guy, you know, he makes a half million dollars a year. No pool parties. Uh, anyway. Uh, let's let's find out why Steve was late today, yeah, because uh, I don't know. This thing starts at six thirty. So, Marcus, why was he late today? Uh, let's find out why he was late. Can I tell you? No, Marcus already knows. Uh, <laughs> Steve was rescuing this little doggy today. Uh, it looked like that. Yeah. <laughs> so if anybody wants a 15 year old little uh, little doggy, Steve knows where it is. Well, it's gonna have a dignified face. Someone left it to die at the house we bought. So uh, I took we, it to this. We, we get everything at houses. We get cars. We get trucks. We get boats. We get dogs. We got cows. Did we get cows today? Or did you did you say you had a farm today? You had, had a bunch of animals there. Uh, so anyway, well, let's thank uh, Trish again one more time. Thanks for staying. to bring up my partner Steve will close us out and tell us more about green and how you can become a green mentor. Steve Jason. So loud. All right, so uh, actually less than two seconds on what you were just saying. Um, you gotta obviously you gotta pull the VIN on your manufactured homes before well it's not it's just right the houses too. I mean, you're just talking about closing in general. Oh, yeah. Okay, so normally, in this, I'm going to say from the agent side, and I, as an agent, sold over a thousand houses. Uh, um, generally, you, it, it's an experience thing where you learn to know if you're dealing with other competent people. There's always a level of trust, and it's a general sense of whether or not they have competency. And two, the, the, the three C's, two of them, character and competency. Generally, you want to be dealing with people who are good people who know what they're doing. And you just have to sniff through it. And you have to be ready to boot somebody. If you, sometimes if you're just trying to throw mud and make a transaction stick, that's when you're trying to push things. It's like a blacklist. Yeah, and there's I'm better. There's title companies, companies that do a great job. Title companies that do a great job. Yeah, title companies that are very they're flaky and they don't pick up the job and do it the right way. Yeah, absolutely. Can I add to that comment? Sure, sure. absolutely. It's and now the whole day rule. It's not so bad for myself, but it's the same principle with the insurance. Maybe not in this room, but it's just so common. It's like, oh, I got my my Liberty Nation mutual farm person to go to and they run a quote but they don't pull real rate right. and then here we are for, now it's four days so i would get a call to the and be like oh yeah they had two cleans in their last home oh yeah this house had this report oh well the credit you knew the mortgage guy knew that but the insurance company was running them up here the credits here and the insurance is scored on credit too and then that uh, it, and these are the tighter deals, but you know their eight hundred dollar quote they got is now twenty four, uh -huh. and then boom, it's gone. So work with an insurance agent that's going to run the rail, run all the reports, pull everything, and run it through and say this is good for X number of days, much like like you know if you're qualifying for a mortgage. Otherwise, you get to the end and you're like, well, you know, one more thing for us to complain about, you know. Because the insurance didn't go through, so make sure you're getting a rate or a rate versus a close, which is just looking your finger sticking into it. All right. Um, so anyway, uh, my name is Steve Chasen. I'm one of the co-founders, technically mentor in chief of Green. Um, for those of you who are members of the company, I'm basically here to advise and consent, lend advice, and I do that for everyone. So anybody can call me, ask a question. I do get 
busy sometimes and sometimes I get stretched, but I try to help everyone out. Uh, we've got people here who are doing deals together, partnering, making things happen. That's really what we're here for. So the idea is not just your typical group to get together and talk about real estate. We want to create more of a mentor-based relationship, um, really uh, get people more engaged. And we've done that with a network marketing company. So we're, we're, we're an education company, but we do have a component where you can go learn online. You can introduce this platform to other people and turn it into a money-making business. Our website, um, if you guys haven't written it down or seen it, it's called learnfromgreen.com. Uh, I know we've got about half and half members and non-members in here today. Maybe a little more members than non-members. Um, and you can see it at our website, some of our training. Uh, everything that we do, like with Trish Murphy, she'll come on once a month, do a title class, and it's all interactive. And I certainly encourage you guys who are members, um, check out the calendar. You can go there anytime and see the stuff, like with myself or Paul Kazanowski. You guys can jump on and basically have this training available anywhere from three to five hours a week right now. Uh, but it's growing, and we record and we archive all this stuff. So all this stuff is on for you guys to, to go back and reach. Um, another thing we really want to foster encourage, encourage is uh, uh, people to get together, do, getting together, doing like partnerships, investments. Uh, we've had some good success with that so far. But ultimately, it's up to each one of you to sort of reach out, you know, talk to people, network, uh, uh, trade business cards. Uh, you know, this person might have a service that you need. This person might have cash they want to invest. Or for some of you guys, uh, you've gotten together and work with some of the more, uh, some newer, younger investors have gotten together and work with some of the more experienced investors, found out and did some wholesale deals and so forth. And they so that's the idea of green. Um, we are uh, uh, about to get in a very serious launching process. So I encourage you, if you're going to get a place in the downline, to get it soon because uh, it's it's going to grow. It will be nationwide um, because the uh, the idea uh, makes a lot of sense, and, and we have a lot of fun. It's, uh, it's good people. We're trying to put out a good message, but hopefully everybody can sort of share the passion that we have for real estate and for education, self-improvement, and um, networking, building our business relationships, and so forth. So if you're not members and you want to join, grab the person who uh, brought you tonight, and um, um, we, can, we can get you signed up. Um, you're always welcome to come here. We'd like to respect your time. Um, this meeting's always free for everybody. So. You're welcome here. Talk about investing. Talk about getting together, going out and finding some ideas, uh, finding some capital, whatever you need to get your next deal done. Um, we'll uh, we'll stay open for another 30 minutes. You guys can mingle, exchange cards, talk shop, and, and uh, 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 we'll have our complete. I think Mark probably showed you uh, as I was rescuing this dog. Any, I, anybody wants a 17 year old dog? It's going to be Hey, Steve, I yeah. it's okay. yeah. um, here at Green, we like to do things together sometimes, and I like to bring up Mickey that she don't ever come up and say anything, but today we did a deal uh, a couple weeks ago, and it's coming it's come from the deal that she gave me, and I would like to pay her a day.
exchange cards. Have a blast, and uh, we'll see you next week. And bring all your friends next week. Uh, Doc, tell us who next week is. Uh, next week is Daniel Perry. He's an attorney, and his talk is going to be on trust and real estate investment. Yes, uh, next week uh, we have attorney Daniel Perry is going to be coming to speak and he's going to be talking about trusts and real estate investment. And then the week after that is one that I'm really looking forward to. Uh, Mike Cathell from Fort Myers is going to be speaking about investing in tiny homes. Very interested to hear what he has to say on that topic. It should be fun. We trust, so we just talked about trust, and next the week after that, we're going to be talking about tiny homes, which we were talking about yes, last week. Yeah. So a lot of cool stuff coming up. So see you next week, and just hang around. So thank you, everyone.